Hey, Carolyn, this has just been a fabulous day. It certainly has. We've got some great teams, and we've had some very good matches, and this next one coming up is going to be just as good. Just as good. Mm -hmm. As the director of Quiz Bowl, how does all of this make you feel? Oh, I love it. I've done this for so many years now. I'm, I've been involved since almost the beginning of Quiz Bowl, in one way or another. But I've been involved since we've had our own board, mm -hmm. since the beginning of that board, and that's been 18 years now. Wow. And so that's... Phenomenal, but I was doing it before that too. Well, before that, talk about the scholarships. Oh, uh, we are excited that these kids can get scholarship money. It's for the individual kids who earned this money. It doesn't go back to the school. It doesn't go to pay buzzers or the next oh, team. Oh, really? No, it goes to these kids for scholarship money to go to college. That is the intent of it, and they have earned it for sure. Fantastic. We're excited. Fantastic. Well, Carolyn, thank you so much for all that you do. Keep up the great work, and we're going to check back in with you a little bit later, okay? Okay, sure will. Okay. Thanks a lot, Evangeline. All right. We most definitely want to thank you all for joining us here for the Arkansas Governor's Quiz Bowl, and we hope that you're enjoying the program just like we are enjoying the program. But before we begin our third and final match for the day, we'd like to honor our third and fourth place finalists in the 3A conference. This year's third place finalists was Center Point and fourth place was Melbourne. Congratulations to them and let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Now, let's move on to introduce the teams for our final quiz bowl match, the 3A Conference Championship between Episcopal Collegiate and Fountain Lake. First from Episcopal, we have yes. Jacob Dowell, a senior. Their captain is Ben Winter, a senior. Alan May, a junior, and Colin Clemens, a senior. Their alternates are Nicholas Simmons, a senior, Ezra Feldman, a junior, Jackson Bridges, a junior, Victoria Jones, a junior, Dylan Wright, a junior, Adam Hall, a sophomore, Caleb Dowell, a freshman, and Anna Feldman, a freshman. Their coach is Stan Whittlesey, and their assistant coach is Bruce Hall. Let's hear it for Episcopal Collegiate. <laughs> <laughs> and now to Fountain Lake. First, we have Alana Kamek, a senior. Their captain is Eli Westerman, a senior. Dylan Payton, a senior. Alex Ditto, a senior. Their alternates are Jesus Avila, a freshman, Hunter Roberts, a sophomore. Their coach is Jennifer Cox. And their assistant coaches are Mary Kate Crompler and Dayton Robertson. Let's hear it for Fountain Lake. And now on to our final match. I'd like to wish both teams the very best of luck. And now I'm going to turn it over to our quiz master, Steve Patterson. Steve, take it away. Thank you, Evangeline. Here we are now on our last game of the day, the 3A state championship. And there's a lot of 3A schools out there, but only two remain. And they're playing today for the state championship for Quiz Bowl. Proud of both of you teams. Episcopal Collegiate, Fountain Lake, good luck to both of you today. All right, if our judges are ready, we're ready to begin here. So let's go with the first toss-up question. What term in statistics refers to the value of a set of data that appears the most... Ben. Mode. Yes. He was crowned in 1888, and his support for Austria-Hungary in 1914 led to the events immediately... Ben. Wilhelm II. You're right. What is the name of the writing system used as the national script of several Eurasian nations? Ben. Cyrillic. You're right again, Ben. Good job. All right, question number four. In addition to the uh, Teutonic Knights, name either of the other two most prominent Eli. Knights of St. John. That's not what I have. Uh, most prominent Christian military orders active during the Crusades. This one, no answer. I have the Knights Templar or the Knights Hospitaller. All right. 
The Winter Palace in St. Petersburg, Russia, serves as the individual visitor's entrance to what art museum, which boasts the largest collection of paintings in the world? Alan. The Hermitage. You're right. Question number six. In what medium was the 1440 sculpture David by Donatello? Ben. Marble. No. Made. Eli. Bronze. Bronze is correct. Sorry. All right, question number seven. What four-lettered term in geometry refers to a quadrilateral with two pairs of adjacent rather than opposite? Eli. Kite. Yes. Question number eight. What American writer and lecturer was best known for writing one of the first best-selling self-help books ever published, the 1936 How to Win Friends and Influence People? Any of your parents probably read it? Dale Carnegie wrote it. Question number nine. What coiled tubules functioned as the excretory organs of segmented worms, arthropods, and mollusks? Yes, Colin. Intestines? No. No answers. It's nephridia. Nephridia. All right, question number 10. With a summit of 19,341 feet, what dormant volcanic mountain is the tallest in Africa? Eli. Kilimanjaro. Yes. Question number 11. Adopted in the year 325 AD by the Ecumenical Council convened by Constantine I and later revised, Eli. The Nicene Creed. You're right. Good job. Had to learn that when I was a child. All right, question number 12. What Minnesota-born jurist and former attorney general was nominated by President Richard Nixon and later confirmed as the 15th Chief Justice? Alan. Berger. Yes. Thanks. Qu question 13 is math computation. So we'll put 20 seconds on the clock and ask you this question. Where I is the imaginary number, find the product of quantity 6 minus 3i times the quantity 2 plus i. Alana. 11. No. Jacob. 16. Uh, I have 15. Mm -hmm. All right. Question number 14. One of the most famous examples of Italo-Byzantine architecture, what cathedral church Ben. Hagia Sophia. No. What cathedral church consecrated in the 11th century features four prominent bronze horses facing the eponymous city square in Venice, Italy? Eli. St. Mark's Cathedral. Yes. St. Mark's is correct. It's also called the Basilica San Marco, but we'll accept it in English. All right. Question number 15. Also known by the Latin name variola, what highly contagious viral disease which caused high fever? Ben. Smallpox. Yes. Oh, Question 16. What Greek island in the northeastern Aegean Sea is associated with several ancient Greek poets? Eli. Lesbos. Yes. Question 17. What British Indian author had a fatwa requiring his execution issued in a... Alan. Salman Rushdie. Yes. Nice. Thanks. Question 18. His given first and middle names were James Butler. Who was this Old West gunfighter, gambler, and former lawman who was shot from behind by Jack McCall in 1876 while holding a two-pair hand Aces and eights. At Eli. Bill Cody. No. Episcopal, no answer. It is Wild Bill Hickok. All right, question number 19. Also known as the law of induced currents, what law in physics states that an induced electromagnet... Eli. Lenz's law. You're right. And question 20. Nicknamed the Pathfinder and nominated as the Republican Party's first presidential candidate, 
Alan. Fremont. You're right, Alan, and you have ended that match. And we'll see if we have any challenges. None here. None here. And so at the end of the first round of a very exciting 3A state championship, we have Episcopal Collegiate with 80, Fountain Lake close behind with 70. Are there any substitutions? Yes. Yes. Welcome back to our 3A state championship here for Quiz Bowl 2014. And these two teams are living up to their reputation. Episcopal Collegiate and Fountain Lake fighting a very good game today. And I believe we've made a few changes. Dylan, you're in. Ezra, you're in, both for Episcopal Collegiate. And we've left everything the same over here, I believe, right now for Fountain Lake. All right. We find ourselves in round two, which is the uh, bonus round. So if you get a toss-up correct, your team will have a chance for some extra bonus points if you can answer those bonus questions, right? So we're going to begin with this toss-up question. What property of multiplication is demonstrated by the following expression? A times the quantity B plus C equals A times... Alan. The distributive property. Alan, you have earned your team a bonus. Thank you, Benjamin. It is a bonus called Assassins. Assassins. So, Ben, when you're ready to give me an answer, look, look right at me and speak loudly, and, and I'll take Sir. your answer. Given the assassin, give the major figure who was assassinated by them. All right. The first one is Leon Cholgosh. Um, that's McKinley, I think. Yeah. Okay. McKinley. Yes. Jack Ruby. Oh, Oswald. Was, yeah. Oswald. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oswald. Yes. Charlotte Corday. Hmm. Garfield. I don't know. My Answer, time. please. Garfield. No. Sirhan. Sirhan. Uh, that's Robert Kennedy. Kennedy. More specific. Robert Kennedy. Yes. And uh, the one you didn't know, Jean Paul Marat. Oh, mm -hmm. right. yeah. okay. Got away from the political figures there a little bit. All right. Here's a toss-up question now for both teams. Number 22, the Supreme Court can and has reversed its stance on major issues before it. What prior ruling was overturned in the 1954? Alan. Plessy v. Ferguson. You are right, Alan, and you have earned another bonus in constitutional amendments. Which amendment to the U.S. Constitution am I describing? Number one. Repealed the 18th Amendment's prohibition of alcoholic beverages. 21st, I think, yeah. 21. 21. Yes. Abolished slavery and involuntary 13. servitude, yeah. except as punishment for a crime. 13. Yes. Prohibits denial of the right to vote based on gender. 15. Oh, 14. Uh, well, 15. 19. No, 19th, I think. My bad. Yeah, 19th. Oh, yeah, 19th. 19th. 19th, yes. Thank you. And number four, prohibits Congress and prohibits Congress and states from basing the right to vote on the payment of a poll tax. 24th, I think. Okay, 24. Yes. All four correct on that one. Good job. Don't so we've done two bonuses right. and we have two to go. So teams, I'll put your hand on your buzzers and let's try to get the next one with this toss-up question. What amendment to the 1901 Army Appropriations Bill was later added into the Cuban Constitution and defined the terms of U.S.-Cuban relations after the Spanish-American War? Ezra. The Platt Amendment. Ezra, you've come into the game just in time. Good job, Ezra. Because you've earned a bonus called Six Flags Over Texas. All right. I'm going to put 20 seconds on the clock, and you must begin your answer before that 20 seconds runs out. And what I'm going to ask you to do as a team is to name any four of the six countries whose flags have at one point or another flown over Texas. 
I'm so we can agree on the United the States, Republic. the Republic of Texas, Spain, I think, uh, yes, and Mexico. Yeah, okay. The United States, Republic of Texas, Spain, and Mexico. Yes. Good job, Ben. I know. All right, the two that you did not uh, mention, and I don't think they're very offended by it, France and the Confederate States of America are the other two. But you got four out of the four for that. Very good. All right, we have one bonus now remaining. And let's see if we can get it with this. Sort of a math question, not a computational math, but follow along. Complete the following trigonometric identity. Cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x. Ben. Equals one. You're right. Good job. And what you've done with that is earned a space exploration bonus for your team. Answer the following clues regarding the history of space travel and space exploration. Number one, inventor credited with building and launching the first liquid-fueled oh, rocket Goddard, in yeah. 1926. Goddard. Yeah. Goddard. Yes. German-born designer of the V-2 rocket and the Saturn Von V Braun. booster Von rocket. Uh, defer to Alan. Von Alan? Braun. More specific, please. Uh, Werner Von Braun. Yes. All right, Thank question you. number three. Gemini 3 commander killed in the 1967 Grissom. Apollo 1 capsule fire. I think it's yeah, Grissom. that makes sense. Yes. Grissom. Say it again. Grissom. Yes. Gus Grissom. And the fourth question. The space shuttle that disintegrated during reentry during the STS-107 mission in 2003. That's Challenger, is that, isn't it? Uh, yeah, challenge. I'm not sure, but Challenger was on takeoff, I think. I Columbia. Might be, you know, I thought I it think was. It's... Columbia. Columbia is oh, correct. I'm sorry. I was confused. All right. So that is four out of four for you on that. And the last question of that round. Do we have any challenges? None here, none there. All right. So at the end of the second round of play, we have Episcopal Collegiate 195, Fountain Lake 70, all part of the strat strategy, Eli. Uh, you get to pick first now on these lightning rounds, and here they are. You could take historical years, give the year in which the following event took place. You could take plain geometry, identify these geometric terms from the definitions. Or you might want to choose Greek mythology. Give the figure in Greek mythology. Actually, judges, we've had this one earlier today. I apologize. So we're going to go to, I don't know if they have this or not, but just give me a moment. We're going to go to nonfiction authors back in the extra section. Okay. And it says, to give the authors of the following works of history, science, philosophy, or biography. Apologize, sometimes we like a category so much we do it twice. All right, you have 60 seconds to make your choice, Eli. <laughs> well, Bill, we've got another great game going on here. We have, and we just saw Episcopal Collegiate just wipe that second quarter out. I mean, they just walked away with that. That's not to say that Fountain Lake won't come back, though. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. the 60-second round can make a big difference in a game. We've not seen that play a part so much. But remember, we've only seen one 60-second round run today. Yes. That was Cedar Ridge earlier in the day. So. Uh, we're due for it another happened. one. We're you due. Bet. We're, we're due. due for one. You know, Bill, I look around and it's always so exciting to see the parents here. We've got to thank the parents yes. for all they do. You know, parents play a bigger role than you can ever imagine in the lives of these children. And also, coaches are important, schools yes. are important, but the parents are probably one of the, the key parts that makes Quiz Bowl work. And students are important too. They put in a lot of time, they have to do a lot of studying. But when you look out into the audience here, we mm -hmm. don't get to see that on camera, but you see lots and lots and lots of parents. And you see the reaction when their child is doing yes. well. There's a few grandparents out here too, yes, I'm certain. Yes, yes. And we want, want to thank the volunteers too, because without the volunteers, you know, this show would not be as great as it is. So we're very thankful for the parents, for the volunteers, for everyone who's associated with Quiz Bowl, especially for those who are assisting with funding. We're happy for them yes, too. Yes, we <laughs> We are. And, and, you know, we have to say, uh, uh, give a shout out to AETN. Yes. I mean, they're the ones that recruit all the volunteers, but without AETN, this program would have died a long time ago. Yes, so thank you, AETN. And I believe we are ready to go back to the match. Welcome back.
back to our 3A state championship game for Quiz Bowl 2014. We have Episcopal Collegiate and Fountain Lake in a great match. And it's time for what we call our 60-second or lightning round. And each team will get a chance to, in one minute to answer as many of 10 questions as they can. And Eli and the Fountain Lake crew have chosen plain geometry as their uh, category. Uh, leaving Ben and his group, they picked from the remaining choices non-fiction authors. All right. So, Ben, you be ready over here in case they give you any bounce backs. And, Eli, we're going to put 60 seconds on the clock and ask you to identify these geometric terms from the definitions. When you're ready to give an answer, make sure you look at me and speak loudly so I know you're not just conferring. All right, here we go. A line intersecting two distinct lines at two points. Secant. No. A quadrilateral whose vertices all lie on a single circle. Inscribed. No, describes a set of points in a straight line. A line or a plane? Plane. No, a line intersecting a circle at only one point. Tangent. Tangent. Yes, describes two angles summing up to 180 degrees. Supplementary. Yes, a degree contains 3,600 of these subunits. Seconds. Yes. Describes the angles opposite each other at the intersection of two lines. I couldn't hear his. Was it vertical? Yes. The portion of a circle bound by two radii and an arc. Central angle. No. Name given to the ratio 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. Yeah. Golden ratio. Yes. A quadrilateral with at least. And I think I hear the buzzer going off. All right. Uh, but we got down to number 10. We didn't get number 10 in, but we did get nine of them in. And of those, you answered numbers four, five, six, seven, and nine correct. All right. So we got a few to pass over to you, Ben. Uh, this is plane geometry. A line intersecting two distinct lines at two points. Transversal. Yes. Good job, Ben. A quadrilateral whose vertices all lie on a single circle. <coughs> Circumscribed. No. Okay. And describes a set of points in a straight line. Collinear. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. And so, the portion of a circle bound by two radii and an arc. Did you say sector. I think it yeah, might be so. sector. Sector. Yes. Good job. Good job, guys. And the Good one job, that man. neither team could come up with was cyclic. Cyclic. Oh. Okay. That's the quadrilateral whose vertices all lie in a single circle. All right, now it's Episcopal's Collegiate's turn, and Eli, it's your turn over here for y'all to be ready for any bounce backs they may give. Ben, it says here, nonfiction authors give the authors of the following works of history, science, philosophy, or biography. Okay? And uh, we'll get our clock ready. Here we go. Inside the Third Reich. Um, Himmler? Himmler, yeah. Maybe? Himmler. No. Sorry. This, uh, the world as will and idea. Sounds like Nietzsche. I don't know. Nietzsche. No. The history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. Gibbon. Gibbon. Yes. The descent of man and selection in Darwin. relation to sex. Darwin. Yes. Profiles in courage. Kennedy. 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 Yes. An inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations. Adam Smith. Smith. Oh, Smith, yeah. Smith. Yes. Commentaries on the Gallic War. Caesar. Caesar. Yes. Uh, being and nothingness. Nietzsche. Nietzsche. No. Coming of age in Samoa. Uh, Mead. Oh, Mead. Mead, yeah. Mead. Mead. Yes. Being and time. Sart. 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 No. Uh, I'm sorry. You need to go back on number five. Look at your direct, your prompt. All right, let me go back and prompt you that Kennedy was not enough of an answer. Oh, John, yeah. John F. Kennedy. Yes. I guess I took it because I heard them say that as they were talking. All right, but you got it right. And I, what I have is that they missed the first two, but then they got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or uh, seven, and then they're passing over eight and ten as well. So four to pass over to you, Eli. And these are nonfiction authors. The first is Inside the Third Reich. Pass. All right. Uh, the next is The World as Will and Idea. Pass. Okay. And uh, then we had Being and Nothingness. Um, Descartes, maybe? Descartes. No. 
and being and time. Pass. Okay, that last one was Martin Heidegger. Uh, the first one inside the Third Reich was Albert Speer. Uh, the world as will and idea was Arthur Schopenhauer. And the other one, the being and nothingness, was our old friend Jean-Paul Sartre. All right, he's big on nothingness. All right, I believe, unless we have challenges, no challenge here, no challenge here, then that's the end of the third round of play with the score, Episcopal Collegiate 285, Fountain Lake 120. We'll now take substitutions. Welcome back to the 3A State Quiz Bowl Championship where Episcopal Collegiate has uh, gotten a little bit of a lead on Fountain Lake, but if there's a team in Arkansas that can come back in this last round to do it, it's Fountain Lake. So let's both be on our buzzers and ready for these last 20 questions. And good luck again to both teams. We're very proud of you for making it to the championship game. All right, our first toss-up. In degrees, what is the sum of the measure of the interior angles of a regular hexagon? Ben. 540 degrees? No. Oh, Alana. 905 degrees? It's 720. Sorry. Sorry. All right, question 32. What 19th century New England writer, one of the fireside poets, wrote a fable for critics as well as the Bigelow Papers? That was James Russell Lowell. All right, referenced in the 13th century Ed Edos, what daughter of Loki and Angraboda presided over the realm of the dead that shares her name? Eli. Hill. Yes or hella, either one would have been acceptable. All right, number 34. What chemistry term refers to the linkage of atoms of the same element to form longer chains, occurring most often with carbon? Eli. Polymer? No, in organic compounds. No answer, it's canton cantonation. In the hexadecimal numbering system, what is the largest value any single digit can be, which would represent a decimal value of 15? Nicholas. F. You're right. Good I forgot job. to recognize Thanks. you, Nicholas. Thanks for coming into the game. And Jackson's in the game as well for Episcopal. And I think we've stayed the same over here, haven't we? All right. Uh, number 36. What Russian physicist was renowned as the designer of the Soviet hydrogen bomb and later won the 1975 Nobel Peace Prize? Alan. Sakharov. You're right. But they didn't allow him to leave to collect it, did they? All right, number 37. What English poet of the Victorian era, who lived at 50 Wimpole Street before marrying her husband Robert, is known for the poems? Alan. Browning. More specific. Uh, Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Yes. All right, question 38. Considered the main architect of American Cold War strategy, what diplomat formulated the containment policy to prevent the spread of communism? Alana. McCarthy. No, abroad in his long telegram published in Foreign Affairs magazine in 1947. Ben, go ahead. Kissinger? No, it was a fellow named George F. Kennan. Kennan. Oh, All right. Sorry. One of the only actors to play multiple Marvel Comics characters in different live action films. What 1981 born actor played the Human Torch in two Fantastic Four films and is now Captain America in the current Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe? Alex. Chris Rogers. No.
No answer. It is Chris Evans. Chris Evans. All right, poor Chris. We hardly know you. All right, question number 40. The daughter of Spain's Ferdinand and Isabella. Who was this first wife of King uh, Alana? Catherine. More specific. Catherine of Aragon? Yes. All right, question number 41. The October War of the Ramadan War are alternate... Okay, the October War or the Ramadan War are alternate names for what October 1973 conflict between Israel and a coalition of Arab states led by Egypt and Syria? Eli. Yom Kippur War? You're right. Question number 42. What term can be described either in terms of population, the number of inhabitants per unit? Alex. Population density. Yes. Good job. Good job. Question 43. Sometimes confused with ball lightning and named after an Italian name for St. Erasmus of Formae, what name is given to the luminous Eli? St. Elmo's fire. Yes. Good Very good. Question 44. What sequel to Eugene O'Neill's Long Day's Journey Into Night features the character Jim Tyrone? Alan. The Iceman Cometh. No. Alex. The Iceman Goeth. <laughs> <laughs> no, neither one correct. It's actually a moon for the misbegotten. But I like your answers better on that. That's good. All right, question 45. What sonnet by Emma Lazarus mounted inside the pedestal been? The New Colossus. Yes. And where is it found? The Statue of Liberty. Yes, very good. Uh, question number 46. What rule in chemistry states that if two or more orbitals of equal energy are available? Eli. Hun's rule. Absolutely right. Question number 47. What Swedish diplomat, only the second honorary citizens of, citizen of the United States after Winston Churchill, used his influence to rescue tens of thousands of Jews in Nazi-occupied Hungary? All right, it's Raoul Wallenberg. Wallenberg. What river, the longest on the Iberian Peninsula, flows along the... Eli. The Tago. Judges? Can you have him say it again? Can you say it again, Eli? The Tagus. Yeah, that's not what he said the first time. What did he say the first time? The Taga. He said the first time. Okay. We'll spell it. it. Okay. <laughs> yes, we'll take it. Can you spell it, Eli? T-A-G-U-S? Yes. <laughs> this, uh, the novel's last sentence is a fragment that is completed by the fragment that forms its first sentence. What is this notoriously difficult to read, James Joyce, Alana? I don't know. I'm sorry. Oh, well, that's right. <laughs> James Joyce novel published in 1939 <laughs> that features the character Humphrey Chipden Earwicker. Alan. Ulysses. No, it's his other one. It's Finnegan's Wake. Mm -hmm. well. All right. Question number 50. What expatriate American author who lived in France wrote the works QED, Fernhurst, The Making of Americans, and the autobiography of Alice B. Toklas? Uh, Alan. Elliot. No. Eli. Hemingway. No, it was Gertrude Stein. And that's the last question Sorry. of the match. Mine's. Any challenges? None here? None here? All right, so with that match wrapped up, what we have is uh, Episcopal Collegiate with 325, Fountain Lake with 190. Fountain Lake, you are our first runner-up in Class 3A. Episcopal Collegiate, congratulations, the 3A state champion in Quiz Bowl. Fantastic, 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 Bill. What do you think? Well, this was the same situation we saw with Cedar Ridge earlier, and that was that Episcopal Collegiate lost last year and were not the state champions. So they were coming back with a vengeance, mm. and boy, they, they showed it. They really did good. They did, they have a wonderful program there, and, and it shows. And we'll, I'm sure we'll see Fountain Lake back again. Yes, and you know, this time we may have not said this, but uh, this was Fountain Lake's first time to be here. Oh, so, first time. Yes, we okay. can expect them to come back so because come once back. you get your feet wet, you want to see swim. Okay. And they'll be here. All right. I'm sure. 
Okay, well, let's go back to the set for the awarding of the trophy and the check. Well, a great way to finish Quizbo today with a 3A state championship. We had a really good team, uh, Fountain Lake. You did a great job and a great run. We give you $1,500 for academic excellence. Good job. Episcopal Collegiate, you're here every year. It's for a reason. It's because of the academic quality of your program and the quiz bow that you play. Congratulations on behalf of AGPDA. I'm DeWanda Kirkland. I'm president of the Arkansas Governor's Quiz Bowl Association. And beh on behalf of the executive board, I present the second place trophy to Fountain Lake. Congratulations. And the first place trophy goes to Episcopal Collegiate. Congratulations. And our MVP receiving $100 is Eli Westerman. Okay. Good job. There you go. Awesome. He doesn't have enough things. And now for the 3A All Tournament team members, Carolyn Shry. Yes, indeed. Well, Eli is definitely our MVP with a 15.0 average, but we also have an HPP. If he'd gotten one more question right, he would have he would have uh, tied that and we wouldn't have had an HPP. Uh, this, that's Heidi West from Center Point. She had a 15.14 average. Uh, we also have Alan May right over here as an all tournament player from Episcopal Collegiate with a 12 point average. Ben Witter from Epis Episcopal Collegiate also uh, with a 9.86 average. Bryce Johnson from Perryville is another all tournament player as is Trip Suter from Paris. Dennis Mitchell from Camden, Camden, excuse me, Harmony Grove, Camden. <laughs> so there's two of those, uh, Harmony Groves, but this is the Camden one. And Nathan Wilson from Mountain View. Jesse Johnson of Elkins. Daniel Riddle of Melbourne. And Alana Carmack, right, sitting up there from Fountain Lake with a five average. Congratulations to all our 3A all-tournament players. <laughs> Congratulations to everyone. This has been an exciting day for the 2014 Arkansas Governor's Quiz Bowl, and it is over for this year. I would like to thank the teams for their hard work, the volunteers for the Quiz Bowl Association, AETN, and you, the viewers at home. I'm your host, Evangeline Parker Guest. We hope to see you next year. Until then, take care.